Hello everyone, so welcome to this video which we're going to talk about carbohydrates. Okay, so the topic today is carbohydrates and then we'll jump into next videos on lipids as well. So just remembering uh, from last week, um, we had, remember we had monomers and polymers and we had our four main macromolecules. So today we're just going to choose one to talk about that one which is carbohydrates or carbs. These are typically your sugars. Um, you can see here different types of carbohydrates. We have a three carbon sugar, a five carbon sugar, a six carbon sugar. Um, sugars are typically recognized um, by the carbonyl group um, and by um, many hydroxyl groups okay so those are things that will give us a uh, um, that that specific structure of the carbohydrate if you don't remember from last class our carbonyl group would be the c and the o over here so these are carbonyl groups double bond o's remember it can be in different parts remember where it's at really affects the structure and really affects the function and then our hydroxyl groups are these OHs. Okay, so this one's a three carbon sugar, has a couple OHs. Five carbon has a couple more. Six carbon is going to have more OHs. So when you see a structure like this that has a carbonyl group and a lot of OHs or many OHs, that's typically your carbohydrates. Okay, that's one of the features that um, stands out from the rest of, of the macromolecules. Um, and these are all called monosaccharides. If I can spell right, monosaccharides. I need some spell check. There it is. Monosaccharides. Okay. And we have monomers and polymers, but for carbohydrates, the monomers are the monosaccharides. Okay. So we have examples here in this image. You can see uh, triose which is a three carbon sugar. We have pentose, which is a five carbon sugar. And we have hexose, which is a six carbon sugar. That six carbon sugar is also known as glucose or fructose. What's the difference here? We have the same structure, um, the same uh, amount of elements, sorry but it's just a difference in the structure or where the carbonyl group is at. So our glucose will have it on the top and the fructose will have it on the second carbon chain. Um, so remember the structure really uh, determines its function, really determines what's gonna happen, how it's gonna react, uh, depending where the groups are at on the, on the, on the chain itself, okay? So let's we'll add here glucose. This is a big word. Um, a very important term, uh, glucose or that sugar, that six carbon sugar is what we use for cellular respiration or what plants use for photosynthesis. And we're going to talk about a lot about glucose. Okay, glucose is one of the carbohydrates we're really going to emphasize on and talk a lot about. Okay, so, so example, um, here is our trials uh, or three carbon sugar. Usually when you break down glucose um, through Krebs cycle, you can get this uh, glyceraldehyde, or we to break down that sugar a, a lot more to get some ATP or some energy out of it. So through all the processes, um, this is one of the products of breaking down that glucose. Um, we have that pentose or that five carbon sugar. Um, this one is more um, ribose, and that's part of the RNA. Uh, remember, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acids, and when you have ribose, that's RNA, ribonucleic acid, okay? And then our hexose is our sugars or our glucose or fructose. And that's where we get most of our energy or where most organisms get their energy from, from these six carbon sugars that we're going to uh, break down when we, after we eat and our body starts digesting and breaking everything down, okay? Now, um, sugars also tend to to form rings. Okay, sugars tend to form rings. Um, not, they're not all linear. They're mainly rings that you can see um, 
these are linear forms of that sugar and this is a, a ring form of that sugar um, when we draw structures of these sugars or glucose or fructose things like that we don't add all of the letters you're typically just gonna see um, kind of like something like this pretty ugly drawing but you'll see that without the without the H's and OH's and the lines all over the place you can maybe have an O here just to know where it's at um, remember the, where, where it's at on the ring or on the structure of the chain really affects its function so and we'll have this is our abbreviated ring structure kind of here and so it's still the sugar but it's simpler and easier for us to draw it in a line it's easy uh, to recognize and it's, it's easy to analyze and kind of manipulate and work with as we're starting to learn about these but uh, more advanced uh, images or once we get into more maybe more OCHEM or more of these um, different um, reactions then we're gonna really see these ring structures of sugar okay um, remember uh, when they lose water or when you um, take away that water dehydration uh, reaction and that's when you start bonding these two together okay so our monosaccharides are those uh, sugars um, that have the three carbon five carbon six carbon so each one of these is a monosaccharide but when you combine those two then that's when we get our disaccharide okay so our monosaccharides um, our triose our pentos our hexose or you can put uh, glucose and fructose our ribose Pentos, things like that. Those are are, um, are different uh, monosaccharides. So now when we talk about disaccharides, let's see if I can spell it right this time. Nice. Okay, when we talk about disaccharides, then we're going to talk about the combination of those two monos. So one and one will give us two or disaccharides. Okay, so here, for example, we have glucose and fructose. This image is a little, um, a little blurry, but... But when you have a glucose and a fructose combining together, they're going to make a disaccharide, which is called sucrose. Okay. So we have these disaccharides, so two monomer monosaccharides. Um, two monosaccharides um, joining together. These uh, disaccharides have covalent bonds remember those bonds have the most energy so that's back from a couple weeks ago um, those covalent bonds have a lot of energy and the specific name of that covalent bond is called glycosidic glycosidic bond okay so that's a little o here in the middle um, right here okay that bond here that's created here so those covalent bonds would join those two monomers together and create that glycosidic bond. So those are disaccharides. So when you have two monosaccharides um, joining together. Okay. So some examples of these disaccharides. We'll talk about um, glucose plus oh, plus fructose will give us sucrose. So when you combine glucose and a fructose, we get a disaccharide called sucrose. So this is typically your uh, sugar cane. Okay. When you combine um, glucose and lactose, that's when you get galactose. Okay. So this is our um, milk sugar sugar it's present in milk um, and then when you combine glucose and glucose you get maltose okay oh, oh, oh. and this is typically your malt sugar okay now <clears throat> these reactions we're talking about combining this one with this one to create this one the same thing can happen, but going the other way around. So when you have sucrose, then you can break it back down to fructose and glucose. And you can even break down glucose even more to create that uh, glyceraldehyde or to create um, two, three carbon chains and to create energy. Okay, so when we eat, we don't really um, eat 
a glucose and a fructose and combine your body with the other way around. We get this sugar, this milk sugar, and break it down into um, smaller sugars or smaller carbohydrates. Now, uh, what's really important is that um, we have something called um, enzymes. So enzymes are the ones that uh, break down um, these big molecules. They're the ones that break down and really convert these two, uh, just kind of split up that big molecule and split them to smaller pieces. Okay, so enzymes are the, the, the workhorses, the ones that break everything down. So we have over here, example for sucrose, and what's really easy to know is that they typically always end with ACE, and they have the beginning of the word itself. So for example, the enzyme for sucrose is sucrase. So that enzyme specifically breaks down sucrose to create glucose and fructose. Um, the enzyme for galactose is galactase. Okay, so galactase is the one that breaks down galactose into glucose and lactose. Um, see, lactase. Lactase. My bad. My apologies. Lactase. Um, and then when you have uh, maltose, you have maltase. Okay. So those are three enzymes. Just those are a couple in, in examples of that those enzymes themselves are the ones that are in charge of breaking that specific molecule down into the two smaller um, monosaccharides, which is glucose and fructose, okay? So remember, these are our disaccharides, so enzymes uh, break down the large molecules, specifically, or specific to their name, or specific to their function, okay? And now, now we have monosaccharides, and we have disaccharides, then we have polysaccharides. Polysaccharides. Hey, there it is. I spelled it right. So now we have our polysaccharides. So as you can see, remember, or you can tell, um, kind of common sense is by when you combine two monosaccharides, you get a disaccharide. When you combine more um, or many of these disaccharides or many monosaccharides, you get a polysaccharide. So poly is many. So we got a chain of monosaccharides or a chain of um, disaccharides. Okay. So our polys is going to be our chain of monosaccharides. Oops. Our chain of monosaccharides. Now we have a couple of different uh, monos uh, polysaccharides that we're going to talk about. So we have over here, we have starch. Uh, we're going to talk about glycogen. And we're going to talk about cellulose. Cellulose. Yeah, I'm looking at my nose because it's a lot of information, so I want to make sure we get everything, okay? So let's get through these. We're not there yet, but let's get through these, okay? So starch, glycogen, and cellulose. Okay, so starch um, and glycogen, they're mainly storage um, molecules. So these molecules are mainly used to store uh, most of the energy or most of the sugars um, in animals or plants. Okay, so starch is for storage, and glycogen is also for storage. I'm gonna get some spaces so we can start on a blank page. There it is. Okay. So starch is for storage, glycogen is for storage, and cellulose is gonna be for structure. Okay, so I'll explain a little bit more on that each one individually. So with starch, plants use starch to store carbohydrates. Okay. Um, with glycogen, um, animals use glycogen to store carbohydrates. Um, and this is mainly done in the liver and skeletal muscles. Okay. So plants have this starch um, that this is where they store that energy that they'll need for later on, or the 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 and the sugar itself, or the carbohydrates that they have, where they're gonna use glycogen. Now that's for us. That's for us for humans. So um, animals use glycogen to store the carbohydrates, 
um, and it's mainly in the liver, but also in our skeletal muscles. So when you eat meat from animals, or when we eat meat from animals, um, you get a lot of protein, but you get a little bit of that energy from their skeletal muscles. Okay, so that's um, the main uh, purpose of glycogen. It's that storage um, for animals. So us animals, we use glycogen for, for storage. Okay, so now... And we have different types of um, carbohydrates. We have simple carbs and complex carbs. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Maybe, or maybe you eat, if you eat healthy, um, that's something you learned about. But this is um, this is a couple, next couple of minutes are more relatable to your nursing major. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, carbohydrates, about um, cellular respiration, and about insulin. Okay, so. So we're going to talk about, um, let's put them down here. So we're going to talk about simple carbs, and then we're going to talk about complex carbs. Okay, so this is very important. Make sure you um, you know this very well. We're going to take a break. Feel free to pause it real quick and start from here, okay? So simple carbs. Um, we have some examples here on this PowerPoint. On the left, we have an amylose, and on the right, we have amylopectin. So if you can see simple versus complex, which one of these images looks more simple and which one of these looks more complex? So just by looking at the image, you can kind of tell that the amylose is a simple one and the amylopectin is a more complex one. More complex, that means it has other structures or it moves on differently. It's not just a straight chain. Okay, so simple carbs. We'll go ahead and write down those examples. We have amylose and complex carbs. We have amylo pectin okay so those are two um, examples real quick now um, the enzymes as so we're talking about enzymes so the enzymes that break these down we have amylase see same as the name amylase is an enzyme um, for for that one um, now look at my notes because my writings really ugly okay um, right so some examples of these uh, simple carbs um, in the food so this is when we're talking about the white rice uh, so when we're talking about um, the white bread um, so these are simple carbs so these are um, not so complex and then we're, we talk about complex carbs is when we talk about the wheat bread or the brown rice why is this important? I'm sure you've heard of that, that uh, the brown rice is probably more healthy or the wheat bread is more healthy than the white bread. And that's because of the complexity of those carbohydrates. So a lot of people have diets low in carbs, but also you can have carbs or eat carbs. Just make sure you eat the right ones or the ones that are healthy for you and for your body. Okay. Um, now, um... So these, uh, let's see, this simple carbs give your body a rush of sugar, okay? And these complex carb gives your body a slow and steady uh, production, or um, you could say sur surplus or supply um, of sugar. So when you eat simple carbs, and they're so simple to break down, your body breaks them down quickly, and uh, your amylase gets in there working that amylose, breaks them down quickly. Once it breaks them down quickly, it's able to release this short burst or quick rush of sugar in your body or through your bloodstream. Okay? When you have complex carbs, then you have a slower and steadier production of the sugar in your body. So when you talk about uh, physically your body and your health, which one would you rather have? So maybe there's times where you'd rather have a sh quick burst of that sugar or that energy, right? You want that glucose to break it down and produce energy. Um, but then there's times when you're really not working out, when you really don't need those rushes, where you'd rather let your body work slowly but steady and produce that sugar as you're moving through or you're going through the day. So really what you want is, is that what your body would prefer is that steady production of that sugar. So let me explain a little bit about um, cellular respiration. And then we'll jump back back into kind of 
explaining about insulin and 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 glucagon and how that works uh, with with these carbs okay so in cellular respiration this is something we're going to get into detail but but understanding glucose right now is really going to help you when we get into those formulas and we're going to get into how those work okay so when we talk about cellular respiration we have c6 h12o6 i don't know if you've heard of this formula or you remember and we have o2 which is oxygen which pr produces co2 co2 plus h2o plus atp okay so in other words we have glucose and oxygen so we eat food and we breathe in oxygen uh, and then we produce carbon dioxide um, we produce water that's how we get rid of things um, and then we produce energy okay so the two biggest 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 things right here that we're talking about right now is glucose and energy Okay, I'm actually going to highlight them real quick. See if I can highlight them. There it is. Okay. Glucose and energy. So this is our formula. C6H12O6. That's our glucose. Okay, that's the pictures that we're talking about over here. This one, the one on the left over here. That's our glucose. Um, that ugly picture that I wrote right here. Um, <laughs> that chain here. It's our glucose. So that's what we're talking about. So this is like going super, super in depth of how that glucose looks like. But looking at the general picture of how our body works is we get that food uh, from plants or from animals. We get that glucose. We get that sugar. We want to break it down. Uh, so we get the food, we get the oxygen, and we make energy. So the whole purpose of this glucose is for us to later on get that energy. Okay, so we want that energy, that ATP for our body, for our muscles, for everything to work uh, to get that energy throughout the day. So we need that energy. In order to get that energy, we need that glucose and we need that oxygen. Okay. So why did I stop here? Because I wanted you to understand the importance of that glucose. Okay. We're talking about um, we're talking about the carbs and the, the chains of those of those glucose and those uh, polysaccharides. We're talking about um, starch, which is stores the carbs or stores the glucose. We're going to talk about diabetes, um, which talks about levels of, of glucose or sugar in our body, okay? So we have these, um, this glucose is very, very, very important. So we, you learn it now, at least the basics, so it helps you understand the formula uh, later in the next couple of weeks, okay? So let's go back to our PowerPoint. Um, so we have our simple and our complex carbs. Now, um, we're going to talk about two opposing hormones in here, okay? Two opposing hormones. <clears throat> what does it mean, two opposing hormones? So there's hormones that regulate the amount of sugar in our body or the amount of carbohydrates in our body. Okay? And there's two big ones, and I'm sure you've heard of at least one of them. We have insulin and we have um, glucagon. Those are two. Let me jump in here to bring in a blank page. Okay, so we have insulin and we have uh, glucagon. So insulin, the main job or the main function is to get uh, glucose to the cells. Okay, so make sure you get that sugar into those cells. Make sure you get that glucose into the cells to break it down to make that energy. Okay, to make that energy. Um, glucose also causes uh, excess. Um, the excess glucose um, to be um, to be stored as glycogen. Okay, so what's it? I'll explain to you what glycogen is right now. So the insulin will get that glucose to the cells, get that energy producing. Make um, sure you break that down, and get it over, and then whatever you have is excess in our body, or you have too much glucose, and it sends it over to store it as glycogen. Okay. Now, glucagon, on the other hand, is um, causes <clears throat> causes glycogen to be released as glucose. Okay, to be released as glucose. Now, a couple of things. Um, first of all, 
when we send these rushes of these uh, sugars into our body, into our bloodstream, it's actually very important that we try to break it down as much as possible. Remember, these are polysaccharides, so we're, or we're breaking it down, um, those carbs, we need to break them down into monosaccharides. So if you have this big molecule going through your bloodstream where you have oxygen, um, where you have uh, everything else flowing through that bloodstream, imagine this big molecule just uh, covering it up or taking a lot of space. It doesn't let your blood flow freely or with a good um, amount of pressure. Therefore, that's when you start coagulation. That's when you start uh, people with diabetes have problems in, in their feet, uh, amputated legs, uh, things like that. So that's really what these carbs or these big molecules of sugars are, are are creating or those dangers that they're creating in our body. So that's why it's very important. More as, as nurses, you'll see once you get more in, in depth into specific uh, diseases and, and hopefully you learn, you, forget, you remember about these basics that we learned here in this class and, uh, and you'll remember how they work and why it happens and how it happens and you have this in-depth understanding of it. Okay, so that's, um, that's very important. Now, when we talk about diabetes, um, let's talk about diabetes so I can explain to you insulin and glucagon. So we have diabetes and we have, remember we have type 1 and type 2. So type 2, uh, this is more due to a diet. So what happens is through time, the more sugar we give, the more carbs that we give to our body, um, we start to desensitizing um, our own cells or our own body. What does that mean? That through time we need more insulin to break down all that sugar. So eventually your body um, is not as efficient and it, as it has to be. So it needs insulin help. And that's when people that start have those insulin injections in their body. Okay, so type 2 diabetes, um, mainly diabetes where um, we desensitize, see if I can spell that right. Yeah, we got it right. Desensitize um, our cells and they need insulin. So they need more insulin to break down that big surplus of sugar. So this is something that's actually um, very dangerous and not, unfortunately very common and, and it's trending up. Well, that's why we need to have a healthier lifestyle or a healthier, a healthier diet because we start um, exceeding or asking our body to do more work than it has to just because we eat a lot of these simple carbs and we eat a lot of these sugars and a lot of these foods that our body just can't break down. It's just too much. It's just too much. So we need to um, slow it down a little bit and give it a healthier lifestyle or healthier or give our body some help for that insulin to kind of break down all that, all that glucose, all that sugar um, into smaller pieces. Okay, so when, when we talk about type 1 diabetes, this is when we talk about one that's hereditary. So this is when we already have issues of insulin production. This is where something that people are born with type 1 diabetes most likely. Type 2, type two diabetes can be hereditary, um, but it's mainly something you, 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 um, you get throughout your life and due to bad uh, eating habits, okay? So we have type 2 and type 1. So the one we focus more on is type 2, something we need to change. So what happens is, we see, if you see this image, let me see if I can zoom in a little more. There it is, okay? Uh, so we have a normal uh, blood glucose levels, okay? Uh, or homeostasis here. Homeostasis just means balance. So just having a balance. So we have a good balance. Now, after we eat, we get this high uh, inc or this increase in the blood glucose level. Okay. So our blood glucose level rises after we eat, right? We bring in some carbs, bring in some food, some energy. Now, this is when our pancreas begins to work as it releases that insulin. So it releases the insulin to what? To break down those carbs, to get glucose to the cells and to get that excess to be stored up as glycogen, okay? So now, our liver here, so this is where our insulin goes to, to work, um, our liver takes up um, the glucose and stores it as glycogen, so all that excess. Um, so our body cells take some of that glucose and turn some energy, and then that's when we produce that energy in our body. So there's two ways to go. So some of it goes to the cells, some of it goes to the livers. So what happens? Um, they both eventually come back and create that level again. Um, now, the other way happens. When blood glucose levels drop through a set point, then uh, 
our pancreas, instead of releasing insulin to break it down, we release glucagon. And that's the second hormone we were talking about. So this glucagon here um, breaks down the glycogen. Okay, so remember, we come back here to the glycogen. Um, remember, it's our storage. So it's kind of where we store those carbs. Uh, it's in the liver and skeletal muscles. So that glycogen is storing all these, um, these carbs. So when our sugar levels are too low, then we have this glycogen that's released to break down and release that glucose back up to our body again. So then that's how this occurs. Okay, so the liver breaks down glycogen uh, into glucose. So then the glucose, the sugar levels come up and now we uh, get that balance again. So that's kind of, it's kind of like a thermometer. That's kind of how this works, our body works. It's actually really cool. Um, really cool. We're in a very simple way. We got these two hormones here doing the job. One breaks it down because we need some more and the other one uh, and some of it's stored. Um, so one breaks it down because we have too much and the other one um, takes some out that was stored and then uh, it releases it so we can even it out. So our blood sugar levels aren't too low, but they're also not too high. So when people have issues with these two hormones, that's when we get this diabetes and we get these health issues that are really, unfortunately, really common in, um, in humans right now in the world. Okay. And let's see. Okay. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, a couple of minutes more. Stay with me. Okay, so we look at the structure here. Um, so we have, let me see if I can pick different colors. So we have um, our starch here. Remember we talked about starch, um, uh, storage for plants. Then we talk about glycogen. Okay, um, so we have here our glucose monomers. So these pic this picture may be like, oh my God, what's going on here? No, come back to the basics. To the basics, okay, so don't, don't freak out. Um, come back to the basics, just the chain, a lot of chains of these um, of these glucose monomers just combining in, in all these together. We get that amylose or that starch here, okay? And then we have glycogen here, and mainly for storage in animals, in those skeletal tissues, remember? Um, and that's also the chains, um, but the structure is a little different, and I'll explain it later on. And then we have this cellulose. So cellulose is what's present in plants, okay? So we talked about cellulose over here. Where's our cellulose? We wrote it down. Here it is. So let's add to our cellulose. Um, if you're writing it down, then you can feel free to add it at the bottom. But I'm gonna jump back up here just because I can and get into the cellulose. So it's structure. So it's mainly um, micro fibrils in in plants or in plant uh, cell wall. Plant cell walls. Okay. So we got this cellulose, and it's really like fiber. So it's just it's a sort of like sugar, but it's uh, it's kind of coiled up into fibers. If you, if you can see in this image right here, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so it's a little image. So it's kind of these fibers. You can see the difference over here, the starch over here, the granules in potatoes or plants. Um, then we have the granules in our muscles. And now we have this in the cell wall of these plants. So we have the structure of plants, which we'll get into actually in two weeks. So we'll get into these plants and the, and the structure of the cells and the plant cells and animal cells, okay? So we got the cellulose and we have chains around chains around chains of these cellulose. So we got all these, um, kind of like a rope, all these different fibers kind of combining together, creating the cell wall. Actually, we don't, animals don't have the enzyme to break down cellulose. We don't have the enzyme to break down cellulose. If you see a lot of animals that eat grass, cellulose is present in grass. So we see cows, you see other animals that eat grass, they don't have the enzyme to break cellulose. What does have the enzyme is bacteria. So remember we have bacteria in our gut, we have bacteria inside of us. So that bacteria is the one that breaks down the cellulose in those uh, plants or in the grass. Okay. Um, so let's write out a couple of things here. So microfibrils in, in, in plant or cell walls, it's mainly linear. It's not really um, as circular as the other ones, um, as it, our sugars that form rings. So this is more of a linear structure. Um, we have those rings of those glucose, um, but this is more of a linear structure. It's not a, it's not as round as these starch over here. Okay. <clears throat> um, and animals don't have enzyme to digest, digest it, only bacteria. 
Okay. So that's um, our third one. It's our cellulose. Okay, so let me see if I can zoom out a little bit and so we can finish up with this first lecture of the week. Okay, so here's our starch. Um, here's our glycogen and here's our cellulose and we already explained a little bit. Um, this is what it looks like in the cell wall. So these really big fibers that are present there. Um, so now here's, look at this. This is, this is actually pretty cool. So we have our glucose here on the top left, right? Um, alpha and beta. That's really just based off this uh, formation here. The OH is on top, the other OH is in the bottom. That's just what we just like to name different things, alpha and beta, um, instead of being top and bottom. I don't know. Uh, we have the same amount um, of carbon, um, same amount of hydroxyl, same amount of carbonyl groups. Okay, so now we have starch over here, this combination of starch. So we have, remember, glycosidic bonds here in the middle, hydroxyls. Um, we have this chain, right? A linkage of glucose monomers. So now, the difference um, between the starch and the cellulose is really look at this bond. This, the OH is on the bottom, all of these for starch. But on this one, you have one on the bottom, one on the top. One on the bottom, one on the top. So those glycosidic bonds, instead of all facing downward, you have one upward, one downward. One upward, one downward. So really, this, the way they are uh, structured or the way they're placed really affects a lot. So imagine, look at this. Uh, just that simple, once on top, once on the bottom. One's a plant wall or a plant cell wall, while the other one is a storage. I mean, it's so simple, so easy to, to make that um, that difference. Like Such a small difference really affects the function completely of that carbohydrate. I think it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, so we have, like I said, our glucose, alpha, and beta. It's on top and the bottom. And our starch, everything hydroxyls on the bottom. Um, we have our glycosidic uh, bonds here in the middle. And our cellulose, up, down, up, down. Just difference. In the structure, oh, I'm just going to go on top instead of on the bottom, and it really completely changes the function of it. Okay, so we'll leave it here. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll post another video on on lipids. And uh, there are, make sure you check your lab, check your lab uh, manual, because there are some supplies that you may need to buy or may need to get for the lab this week, okay? But uh, remember, if you have questions, if you're really struggling, jump in on Mondays to my office hours. I'll be there for an hour. I can ask questions. You can ask questions and I can help you out any way I can. Send me some emails uh, and if not, I'll see you Wednesday in class. Thank you.